Hey there, Adam here. Today I wanted to do a video on Teams to show you how to make a uh, Excel spreadsheet that has all of the due and overdue tasks and to flag the overdue tasks across your entire group slash organization. So this is not functionality that comes with Teams out of the box. I've seen a lot of people ask about it. There's some forum stuff. I, I pieced through that and worked on it myself to get a more complete solution that works for me. So I am just figured I'd put together a quick video, show you how I did it, I, and I will provide a uh, link for you at the end of the video. I'll tell you where to go get a link for it. So the whole purpose of this is, let's just say you have these four or five channels. Uh, so the way we, we do our work is we have client channels, so John Smith, Mary Sue, whatever. Client one, client two. And then their tasks are done through tasks by planner inside of Microsoft team. So you can click on their tasks and we have separate uh, planners or plans for each client. So you'll see that these are, are different. This one's, I can't believe it's not done. This one's got an overdue one from last week and then one due tomorrow. You can see that there, it's overdue by the red on it. So Microsoft, or Microsoft planner slash teams uh, does not have a way for let's just say the CEO or the boss or whoever to see what's overdue across the entire organization. They can't see, they can't even see what's overdue for a specific person. They have to click on each client, click on the, the, the plan and then see what's ever due. You can also do it inside the back end and just uh, of planner in the web browser, but it's not much better. You have to click on each plan. So pretty, uh, not good, especially if you have, like we do, usually about 80 clients at any given time. So what we are going to do is, let me pull this up without showing you anything you're not allowed to see. Let's see, that's safe. So we are going to do an Excel spreadsheet. And I'm going to pull it up right here. And what it's going to do is it's going to have the title of the task. It's going to have the name of the client. It's going to have the due date. And then it's going to tell you whether or not it's ever due or not. So we're going to set this up, and I'm going to show you how it works. So we're going to be using Power Automate to do this. So I have already loaded up my template for this. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go to My Flows and let me save this real quick. Uh-oh, it's mad at me. Yeah, I know. Okay, so what you're going to have to do is go to My Flows, and you're going to import a flow, because I'll give you a link for uh, one to import. And you're going to click on Flows, you're going to click on Edit, and then you're going to be here. So whenever you load up My Flow, or if you do it from scratch, I'll show you the text from scratch as well if you want to try to type it out yourself. So it's going to be, I have it set to recur once a week, and then... I, I am not going to try to explain to you how exactly this works, but essentially what it does is it's going to pull the name of the client and insert it into each task. Uh, I'm not going to explain to you how this works because it took a lot of trial and error for me to get it right. So what we're going to do is we are going to, first you're going to pick your team. So in this case, or your group. So in this case, I want all the plans from the Adam Playground group because that's my playground to play with YouTube stuff. So we're going to load up all the, the plans. So in this case, we're going to have plans for, I believe, it's probably just going to be two plans. I think client one, client two, and maybe one, yep, one for tasks. So it's going to go through and it's going to pull the names of all the uh, plans. And then for each plan, what this is going to do is it is going to pull the name of each uh, task. So this is going through, and for each plan, it's going to pull the name of each task. And then this is essentially, and again, not going to try to explain the variables. It's a gigantic pain. But what this is doing is this is setting the value of each uh, group or each plan and then setting it to my plan name so that they're the same. Because then what we're going to do is we're going to show each list inside of each plan. And that's the wrong group ID. Let me switch it to the playground. And what this is going to do is it's going to add the plan name to each task. And again, this perhaps a little more detail than is necessary. I, but that is going to allow this row right here for client to fill in correctly. Otherwise, it just it shows the plan ID number, which is useless because it's just a string of, of numbers. You can put it into your browser and pull it up, but 
that's sort of beats the point. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to only get the tasks that are not finished. So that's the tasks. This is value percent completed. I uh, and it's less than 100, which means it's unfinished. Then for each one of those unfinished tasks, we're going to add a row to. So this is actually almost the right spot. So we're, you're, you have to go into your uh, SharePoint backend or your OneDrive and then set up a Excel document. And then I have it saved here. So a second. And then YouTube video. So here's my Excel document I set up for this purpose. So I'm going to choose that, that document and it's going to load the, uh, so this is the tables. So I have one table, YouTube task table. Uh, and then if you see here, it's got title, client, due date, past due. And then I don't know why that's right there. It's sort of weird. I, so it has the title, the client, due date, past due, which you see is going to, oh, I see it's picking that up. So it's going to find those four rows. So you're going to import the title of the, of the uh, task into title. For the client, you're going to choose that variable that you set up before. And then for due date, it's just going to be due date. So this is the whole thing. Again, I will export this, provide a link. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier. But that, it, that is showing you the, the sort of the columns you need to change. So the columns you're going to need to change are uh, this one, list the plans, pick your, your correct group. This one, you got to choose the correct group again. Uh, and this one, which is going to be the location of your uh, Excel document. So this is all we need. So we're going to hit save. Hopefully nothing gets mad at me. Okay, seems good to go. So I'm going to hit test. Oh, wait, I need to enable it. Give me one second while I figure out how to enable it. Oh, of course, it's right here. Turn on. And then we're going to test it. Edit. Test. Manually. Test. Run flow. And then you're going to see here, it's going to show your flows running. And then it's going to have this apply to each. Uh, depending on how much stuff you have, this could take a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pa pause the video, wait for this to finish. Oh, never mind. It's done. I guess because there's not much going on. I want to say it takes about five to ten minutes for my uh, primary, primary organization, the law firm. So I'm going to pull open. Close this again. And let's pull it open again. Probably did that. Oh, it hasn't loaded yet. So one of the downsides of OneDrive and... Uh, SharePoint is it takes a minute to load. So let me give it a minute and then we'll pull it open. All right, now it's working. So we're going to click on it and then you're going to see here it is. One, you know, the titles of the tasks, the names of the clients, and then whether or not it's due or overdue. So you're going to see this first column is going to always say overdue. That's where we're putting the formula in. So this is the formula to decide whether or not it's due or overdue. I, uh, and then you're going to see anything without a due date is considered overdue, which is intentional because everything should have a due date. So I can't wait this isn't done is overdue because it was due back in January. The one that's due tomorrow is not due. Uh, and the one that was due last week is overdue. So you can sort this by A to Z if you want to. And you can see, okay, go away. Uh, and you can see either not due or overdue. I guess it's sort of Z to A. That makes more sense. So you can see all the overdue tasks by the name of the client, and then you can go from there. You know, obviously with the small data set, uh, not super useful, but the way that this column is working, so this formula is pulling off of this date. So this date is our, I, is basically what it's doing is it's creating the date in the same format that Planner exports it in. So it's the same uh, UTC standardized date format, which is, that's why it's got the Z at the end. So you can see that this text now is, you know, text is, so it spits out in text form. Now is to pull the, the time as of 
when the spreadsheet was last refreshed. And then this format is the UTC standardized uh, data set, uh, time, time format. So what it then does is it says which one is less than the other. If the uh, one in here in this column is less than the past due date, or is, is less than this, then it's overdue. If it's greater than, it's not overdue. So I hope that this makes sense. I know this was sort of a lot to take in. I, I am, like I said, I'm going to provide to you this spreadsheet. Uh, I will make a copy of this. I'm going to put it on my website. Uh, you, you'll be able to download it there. Uh, I will also provide a link to the flow so that you can just import it. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I know this was perhaps not the cleanest tutorial I've ever, ever done. Uh, it's a little more complicated than most of the stuff that I've shown. A few more steps, but I do think with the formulas and the uh, templates that you should be able to import it pretty easily. And of course, you can do whatever you want with this. You could make it blue. You can make it red. Sort of beyond the scope of the video. You can make it nice and pretty. I just wanted to keep it nice and simple for today. All right. I hope this was useful. Thanks. Bye.